Isn't it frustrating when you're trying to explain strength in your world to somebody? Sometimes. A little, because it's something that I feel like you shouldn't have to explain. It's hard to explain transformation, and you shouldn't have to explain what somebody's going to get, because the more you explain it, then the more you actually taint their potential transformation. Just like today, you didn't tell me about this recording. You said, hey, just come. I'm going to ask you questions. Why? I don't, I don't know exactly what was going through your mind, but I know why I would do something like that. Mm. Because I don't want to ruin it for you. I want you to come and tell me about how you felt. I want you to show up exactly how you are without any preconceived ideas about who you should be or how you should show up. Just show up as you are mm -hmm. and allow yourself to go through an experience rather than show up planning your experience. And that sounds... There's two, there's two sides of that, right? Because we do want you to show up and have an, a desired outcome. But I think that if you showed up with, without, like with a more open mind in general in life and allowed life to be an experience rather than fighting the experience, the amount of transformation that you could achieve is so much more. I mean, I think of like an avalanche. An avalanche takes this snow and it like carves this thing into the side of a mountain. But how much more powerful would be a mudslide? Right? If everything was fluid and could just fall, you could get so much more stuff moved. But having to force it and carve it, it's, you see, uh, not as much moved. And so if you allowed all the resistance in your life to just flow out, you'd, create more change and it'd be less painful and more enjoyable of a process than having an avalanche carve something out of you. Sometimes carving's good though. But. So when you're talking the strength in the world, what do you tell people about it? I try to tell people as little as possible and tell, tell them that it's going to be an experience that they've really never been to. Even if they've been to other personal development things, if they've been to other um, workshops, seminars, it's an experience, it's for them, it's something where they're going to meet a lot of other great people and that's going to contribute to their transformation. <clears throat> but the main aspect of what I love most about it is although you get to experience a lot of personal transformation, you're experiencing that in a group of people where it's a safe space because everybody else is there to experience transformation for themselves and not others. For me, Honestly, one of the biggest things, I went three or four times before I really started to understand why I was there, which is kind of... Why do you, what do you mean? I don't know if I would say understand why I was there. Maybe that's not the right term, but what I was getting out of it. I, at, when I first went to my Strength in Your World, I was so worried about, I don't know if I would even say worried, but... I wanted to put on a good face. I was trying to become better. And so I was stuck in this belief that um, only being the, the positive version of myself was allowed publicly anywhere. And um, the analogy I use, like they talk about like a yoke like, or carrying the yoke of Christ. Well, there's two types of yokes. There's this type of, type of yoke that's like pulling oxen where both need to be pulling equally. If you have one strong pull and one weak pull, it will screw up your team of whatever's pulling. Mm -hmm. um, and so the real yoke is not what they put on each oxen. The real yoke is the thing that connects it. So for a human, the yoke is a bar that you put across your shoulders and fill with water on each side. But if you fill water with only one side, the positive side, the light, the joy, whatever you think is publicly acceptable, and you don't allow any of the negative side, then your life ends up very dis uncomfortable because you're carrying a lopsided life. And so what Strength in Your World allowed me to do and become is acknowledge the things in my life 
that I felt at the time were negative or holding me down and reframe those experiences to being a benefit to balance me in the future. One of the things I always appreciate about the coaches I've hired in the past is to actually like hear and see like behind the curtains, mm -hmm. right? Because I think as leaders, sometimes we do our followers or the people we're leading a dis a disjustice, right? Yeah. We, we only talk about what they need to do to become successful. But I feel like, I just feel like we're doing them a disservice. Yeah, like I want to genuous. Yeah. And not that people are, you know, not wanting to help. I just feel like real transformation is what do we do in those moments where we get punched in the face? Right. The cell doesn't go through. Right. The marketing's not working. Right. The team member quits. What do we do in those moments? And so Strength in Your World, I want it to be like a real conversation, not just talking about, you know, positive shit, but also like the shadows and the dark side. And something that Ed Milet said at the last event, dude, you missed the last event. It was good. I know. Dude, it was, I, I don't want to say this, but it was life changing. But it could and, be life changing. You should say that. Yeah. It, it and, and, and did it, a good job. Yeah, it was like, it, it was life changing. And strength in your world is that too it's life-changing and ed Milet was there and he was speaking and he sh he shared the story before right and i connect a lot with ed Milet, especially like with his intensity he played baseball and he's and he was kneeling down to a son mm -hmm. and he was like listen max he's like i'm not gonna love you any more for winning and i'm not gonna love you any less for losing mm -hmm. and when he said that it just like really clicked for me in that moment is like do we love ourselves more when we're winning? Do we maintain more positive enthusiasm when winning? And then opposite, do we love ourselves when we're losing? Do we love others around us less when they start losing? And so now it comes back down to you appreciate the great things and the strengths about you and you love those, but what about your weaknesses? Mm -hmm. Right? And so true confidence comes from do you believe okay in your power and your ability to produce something i think that's where real confidence comes from wouldn't you agree yeah i would agree i mean it comes down to what you believe is possible and i think that sometimes with with what you're saying though some people like the darkness in somebody and i'm going to say darkness uh, that's almost like the vindictive justification type side that they're not fully understanding what you're saying is they're saying, okay, all my lightness. Well, now I'm free to express my darkness or free to acknowledge my darkness, which is important. And I, we do need to acknowledge it. But sometimes people only make half the transfer transformation and they say, well, my darkness is also part of me. And so rather than accepting their darkness as and I'm saying darkness, but accepting the things in their life that have happened uh, and saying, how can these be a benefit to me? How can I learn from these? Yes, they're part of me, but do they have to stay part of me? And if they're going to stay part of me, what's the benefit to these? Right? Some people will just say, well, they're part of me, so everybody in the world should accept my darkness with me. And that is, I don't actually believe that. I think um, I, we're, we've been using the words light and dark. I think they're all just experiences. And there's not, they're neither good or bad or right or wrong. They're experiences. And it's up to us to find the value in them so that we can serve more people, not see this thing and then start excusing ourselves from becoming more because now we're allowed to accept our lack. I think that it can be very... Uh, tempting to see that those areas and say well that's just who i am i think it's looking at it and seeing what is the gift that this allows me to create from it because mm -hmm. when i was younger i got put in the the slow reading class and i was so pissed off i was so upset right but i did i had i kind of had a stutter i kind of still do have a stutter mm -hmm. right and so I can sit there and focus on that weakness and degrade myself or else I can say, you know what? I'm going to allow my heart to come out more. I'm going to be more passionate. 
right? I'm not going to let this. And so it allows those other things within me to sprout and grow. And I believe that's one of the reasons why it's important to start to acknowledge because their shadow, everyone has a shadow, right? And when you start to really look at the shadow and look at, well, what is that shadow or that weakness or that negative emotion really trying to tell you, mm -hmm. right? But we ignore them. We push them down. We take drugs to push them down. Like we're a not filling society, right? We're just numbed out to death. And then which takes us away from really growing because now we're not really to grow through the pain, right? You go to the gym, you have to feel the pain to grow. And unfortunately, as a fucking human being, why is it that you can't just be inspired all the time? Why is it that the pain has to make you grow? Well, I was another friend of ours, Sam Taggart. He, I loved this analogy that he had used as watching a reel of his. And he said... Um, just like he was studying or, or contemplating trees and the trees, they grow and then they grow fruit. So what is, where is the seed for the next tree? The seed for the next tree is in the fruit up on the tree. So if your goal was a seed and you made it up to the top of the tree and you're like, I made it up to the top of the tree, I win, right? And I've produced a lot of other people there. How does that seed that you produced, that fruit that you produced, how does it also become a tree? It has to fall to the ground. It has to deplete itself. Your bank account that you finally got up to 100,000, where you finally got up to a million, for you to get to 10 million, you have to allow that bank account to go down or that spiritual account, that stress account, all of that, you have to be willing to release what you have grown to and throw it all away and start again as another seed to level up. I thought that's a fascinating thought. It's the same thing with muscles. Like in order for the muscle to grow, the muscle has to be broken down and create all these little micro tears throughout the muscle, mm -hmm. right? But if it doesn't heal, correctly right and you don't recover from that tear down then there is no growth in fact you actually made yourself weaker like you could legitimately go to the gym and make yourself weaker in a way by not lifting like you should and not recovering and not doing the things that you need so strengthen your world has been the only name i haven't changed across almost my entire business Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, podcasts has changed, everything has changed. And so what Strength in Your World is, it's a leadership discovery into who you are. And the more you can discover who you are, right, you can start to transform who you are. And this then applies into your business and more importantly, your brand, right? That's the foundation of your business. And so Strength in Your World is two days that I feel like if people really came in open, and I love your analogy of like, yeah, just coming in open and not having expectations, right? And the, I think the hard thing about it is I know people have been to the other rah, rah, motivational events, sit and take notes the entire time. And so they just kind of overlook it. Yeah, and they, they, it's hard for them to believe that it's going to be different here. Yeah. Um, and until you experience it, then you think it's going to be the same. And then you come and you say, okay, this is something that I've never experienced before. There was more transformation. There was more uh, involvement. It, it's almost like a retreat in a way where you build really solid quality relationships, but expedited in a two-day um, experience form. But the amount of growth that you get to experience and change, you don't just work through it mentally or on paper, which is important. I mean, like writing things down is important, uh, but you also get to work through it physically with different things. And that, like one of the things that I gained from Strengthen Your World over time with like learning how to be seen was I found that I could be very comfortable doing just about anything with my eyes closed. 
Um, which is silly because they, everybody can still see you. But it was like that childhood where it's like, if I can't see you, then you don't exist. And that's not true. And so learning to say, look, this is who I am, and I'm not ashamed of who I am. I don't need to close my eyes to be who I am. I'm confident in who I am. And once I became confident in my, who I was, then that really helped my business, helped my relationships, helped everything. And that helped me ultimately fully express my brand as a, as a leader and doing what I do. So now when people think of me and how I serve them in the capacity as a financial professional, a lot of that exper experience with me, they experience both sides of me. The very loving, I would say charitable, kind, service-oriented, would bend over backwards to serve you. And also, some people would say harsh, direct, this is what reality is, can you accept reality? So I don't attach reality to how I feel about somebody, and I do my best to help them detach reality from how they feel about themselves. And finances is a really great scorecard to have that conversation in because of the emotional stigma around I mean, it's, it's evolutionary. Like, if you're a good provider, then you have more uh, status from, like, ape land, you know? And if you're not a good... It is. It's ape like, land, what's ape? I don't know. Like, the, <laughs> the, those, uh, those groups of primates, like, if you were able to provide more for more monkeys, then you had more status. And as you lost your ability to provide, you had less status. And so that it's ingrained in us to feel a certain way about our our ability to provide and i think there's a lot of strength in recognizing two things one you don't have to provide all by yourself and two you can actually provide better if everybody is enlisted in providing it's way less stressful if everybody feels like it's their job to help the tribe to help grow then it's a lot less stressful as the leader because not everything is on your shoulders. And those are like small things about what I've learned about myself through the Strength in Your World experience that I've been to other conferences, other sales pitches generally is what I call them, right? Um, I've been to other masterminds, I've been to other retreats, and I don't think that any of them have had the same impact on me as an individual helping me understand that teamwork is a better uh, way to accomplish any goal. And teamwork doesn't have to be in your business. It could be cross businesses, cross industries. How do you become a leader of a leaders? I think that's what Strength in the World does. There's only one person that's been to all of them over the years. That's you. Yeah, and it's gone through evolutions team members and um, I guess the biggest thing I've learned through seeing all the people that have gone through the event over the years is we consciously think that we have these defined goals and these defined things that we're working on but we really don't like at all and we're super vague we're super broad and I believe at the end of the day, you're always going to get what you want. But if you're not really clear in what that is or how you got to this belief in the first place, then it's really hard to make the transformation, right? And people say, well, I need to go to the gym more. I need to focus on my health. I want to make, like we make these broad things, right? And so our influence is just everywhere. And so being at this event, just asking people these questions and seeing it is just like, we need to get way more defined in our life, right? And we need to have vision. And the more clearly you have vision, not just having vision, are you, is that vision inspiring, right? Does that envision bring other people in, right? Are you leading that? And as you start to do that, it starts to create a framework for you to literally create everything that you want in your life. And it all starts with you. And that sucks, 
really bad sometimes. Hmm. <laughs> like that really sucks. But also, it is also one of the most freeing things ever. And I think sometimes people have this, like they're so, they, they try to control every aspect of their life or they feel like they do. And they don't, they don't have control and they go to bed and they still have this anxiety because they feel like they can control things, but they don't and they can't, but they do have a lot of influence. So strength in your world is about really tapping into your level of fluence. And I don't think I've reached the highest version of myself. I don't think you have, and I don't think any of us have. And I don't think that progression stops until the day you die. But even we can go into a whole new conversation about that, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what happens after we die. And I think that's an important conversation to have because your religious beliefs, your thoughts of the afterlife have a lot to do with how you are living your life now. Wouldn't, well, you, wouldn't you agree? Well, I, I do agree. And I think that one of the things you said is like it starts with you and this is almost the same as like accepting our darkness people hear that and that's what causes the anxiety because they think it starts with you and it finishes with you it's like if it's to be it's up to me that's a great phrase to get you started but if you think if it's to be if it's to be then it's up to me forever then you're never going to dream bigger than what you believe you can achieve and you're never going to work harder than what you believe you can personally work. And so although it starts with you, it doesn't end with you. And that's why I think that the conversation of influence is so important because it doesn't, although it starts with you, the goal is to transfer that to other people. And so it's a ripple effect. The ripple can start with you. That's wonderful, but it can't end with you. If it reverbs back and stops with you, that sucks. And same thing with legacy. Yeah, legacy is important and it is going to start with you. You can be the one, as Ed Milet says, but that's just to be the one to start the legacy. If, if you're the one that starts the legacy and you're the one that ended the legacy, what a crappy legacy, right? Like you don't want to be the one on both ends. You want to be the one who starts it and also you want to set up a system to continue it. And this is what like the Eastern Asian cultures, if you look at the Chinese dynasties or the 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 Russian dynasties, any of these dynasties that were generational, even the, the monarchy in Britain, they are a cog in the wheel of a family dynasty. And they all understand that. They understand that their role is to maintain the system. And so somebody back way back when, thousands of years ago, started the Chinese dynasty. And now it's been a thousand years and it's still this, in the same family. And all the people in between had to understand this person started it and now it's my job to maintain and improve upon it and keep going and keep going and keep going. But if every one of them said, well, he started it, I want to go start my own dynasty, they would disrupt the whole thing and it would be over. And so there's a deep sense of like, yes, you can start it, but what also what things do you want to continue and improve on from your past self? Like I love now being an adult, understanding what my parents did for me, I love that. So now what's an improvement upon that? Well, maybe financial status might be an improvement on the identity, but only if it's an actual improvement, not a supplanting of the identity of being independent, being determined, being successful, those things. So if I just remove all of the life lessons I earned um, from my parents and I supplant it with here's money to make up for all that, then that's a failure. Yeah, and you hear a lot of parents say that. What's the thing that you want to give your kids money, right? But what is it? The first generation makes it, second generation enjoys it, third generation destroys it. Mm -hmm. Is that the saying? Yeah. And so, and I was one of those people. And I think recently this last, I don't know, year, year or so, I really clicked in me like, I don't want to just hand Tatum money. Like how fucking depressing would that be? Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like if that's all I handed Tatum, you know, when I, when I pass, right, that'd be depressing. And so leadership comes back down to following, but what have you followed, right? Mm -hmm. What have you followed? And, and what I've learned more is like, it really does take a team. 
and you're the leader of that team in so many different areas of your life. And people don't get this. Like when I go to a massage therapist and my knee's hurting, I don't sit down and lay down and go, my knee hurts, fix my knee. That's not being a leader of my own life. That's giving my health up to that person. And we do this every day. We do, people do this jobs. When I sit down, I lead her where I left off, right? My calf has been tight. Okay, when I was playing basketball years ago, I landed right here. Here's what I think's going on. And I start to show her where I left off. Now, she doesn't have to start from the very beginning and work her way up to try to find what's the problem in the core root of my knee, right? Me being conscious of my own body and where I'm at, what I've been working on, what I think the problem is, okay? That allows her to take it to the next level. And that's what being a leader is about in your health, in your business, right? Your family, like all the things is being conscious and actually what's going on. And I think that's a big reason why people don't make the money that they want in their business. Mm -hmm. They just come in and it's like, you tell me what to do. It's like, well, what have you been doing? Right? Like, like how conscious have you been in your, in your journey? And, and so strength in your world is about understanding the cycles that we go through because the second you can start to see these cycles you can start to change these cycles and you change it through thoughts you change it through emotions and feelings you change it through motion right and the biggest thing is you have to enter a new experience mm -hmm. and if you don't enter a new experience and you just get a new thought okay it gets caught right at the body. You get a new thought that tells you, here's what you need to do in your business. And I'm sure you agree with this. And then the thought goes to drop down into your body to actually make you do something different. The body goes, no, I have experiences that contradict what you just told me. I have emotions that, and this is scientific shit. I can't explain it, but right. in this moment, but there is science to back. Like there is still emotions and feelings that are still inside your body, mm -hmm. right? And so you have, your body has all this evidence to suggest that that's not truth and so you reject it. So it really is mind and body sinking together that's gonna create real transformation. And that's what Strength in Your World is about. Yep, I agree. Completely. How would you wrap this up? I think that that is what it's about. It's about ch making that intentional change to bring both your what you believe is true and then actually giving you a safe space to put that into your body because so many times you go to these things hey get pumped up but then it's left up to you to make it happen and do you have no physical experience of that working and so when you can actually achieve a physical experience and have a result while you're in the experience then you're much more likely to replicate that experience at home or at least, at the very least, remember back and say, hey, this worked at least one time. There was something that I didn't believe I could do and I was proved wrong by my own experience. I didn't think I could lift it up and then I lifted it up. I didn't think I could walk on fire, then I walked on fire. I didn't think I could break a board, then I broke a board. I didn't think whatever it is, those types of experiences are okay. I didn't think was something that was possible, and then it was possible, not just possible for somebody else, but possible for me. And that's what I like most about it is it's helping each person discover what's possible for them. And if you just come once, it's okay because you're still in your head. But you come two or three times, then you start to get the feeling of, okay, I'm going to challenge what's possible. I'm going to challenge what's possible. Mm -hmm. And every time you come, you get to challenge a new belief of something you didn't think was possible that actually is. Yeah. And that's why I think it took me four times before I really got the idea of what I was getting from Strength in Your World. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're a part of it now, man. Me too. That video seems like it was done yesterday, doesn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> well, there's a lot of it that's... Uh, yeah, there's a lot that was needed. That's crazy. So... I look so young. What do you really want to tell people about Strength in Your World? I just want to tell them, get your they fucking ass, come. like, get your fucking ass there. Like, if, if you really say that you want to do all these things in life, like, tomorrow is not a fucking option. 
No, tomorrow never comes. Right. Tomorrow is not a day, right? I'm not going to do it tomorrow. And so I've been to experiences where I'm paying triple this. Like if this is something that's important, come to it. Okay. You're not going to get some pushy sales pitch and you're not going to be pitched on buying something. You don't have to buy shit. Come to the experience, come open, come ready. And if you do, I know it's going to be transformational in more ways than you thought. Now I say life-changing in a lot of times, but for some people it might not be incredibly life transforming. However, it is for a lot. However, it's an experience that I think everyone needs to go through in their life if they're really wanting to be, do, and have the things that they want. Let your current experiences stop you and be defined by your experiences. Or you can define yourself through your experiences.